one self exists. Indeed, is existence itself. Differences are born of imagination. Once differences are imagined, any number of causes can be supposed for them. But the causes are as illusory as the differentiation is. One existence, Brahman, infinite and eternal, is and is yourself. Sri Bhagavan reveals that it is only so long as the reality is not known as it is and one assumes one's identity as an individual or eco-entity, that such differences as Jagajivapara, the universe, the individual, and the supreme, seem to be. Such differences derive the reality from where? Only from the perceiver of them. And since they are imagined, it is simply from the conceiver of them. According to the definition, assume for oneself, such differences appear. If the true nature of oneself is known as it is, differences are nowhere to be found. The differenceless state, which is really just the self as it is, is perfect fullness. It is replete with indestructible peace and uncaused happiness. If you are distinct, then God appears distinct from you, and likewise the world. By the world is meant the entire objectified field of experience, subtle and gross, from thought extending to formed objects. If you are distinct, individualized, then everything else is likewise. But what in truth are you? Abandoning any tendency to misidentify with the body, inquire deeply within as to what in truth you are. The Maharshi, Adi Shankaracharya, Ribu, and others. Proclaim that yourself is of the nature of Satchitananda, being consciousness bliss, undifferentiated being consciousness. Similarly, the Upanishads declare the nature of the self, the Brahman, Satyam jnana manantam, the true, the knowledge, the infinite. Ah.
Obviously, the body does not correspond to such definitions. So to discover what in truth you are, abandon the misidentification with the body. Differences do not declare themselves to be real. You have to say they are real. Otherwise, they are not. Similarly, the body does not declare itself to be I. Rather, one imagines, I am a body. But imagination does not make for a fact. Being consciousness bliss, Satchitananda. What is your being? Find it, and you dwell in bliss. What is your consciousness? Find it, and the bliss that was never lost has been recovered. to discern your nature as consciousness. Discriminate the knower from the known. To discern what your being is, cease to define yourself in terms of what is objective to you. You cannot be a known or unknown object. That is, you cannot be a perception or a conception. What remains? What you truly are, you are always. So what are you changelessly? Certainly not a body which has birth, change, and death. Likewise is it with the senses and with the thoughts constituting the mind. None of such things are always. What is always? Reality must always be real. The reality of the self is always such. Deeply inquire in this manner in search of your actual being, your very existence. And you will find that which was previously misperceived as Jagajivapara, the universe, the individual, and the supreme. For there is only one existence. The Vedas declare all this is Brahman. What does it mean? It does not mean that there is an all, and it happens to be Brahman as well. It means Brahman alone is, and there's no such thing as all. All are only Brahman. That includes you. You are only Brahman. The nature of Brahman is the nature of the self. This one self alone exists eternally. Infinite, boundaryless, 
homogeneous, immutable, perfectly full. It is as it is forever.